In the name of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's gospel is about the Samaritan woman when she met the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, of course, that uh, we said the same, read the same thing during the Great Lent, and that indicates uh, no matter how a person is involved in sin or how long it is, the old Lord Jesus Christ is the one who is capable of forgiving the sins. Today we have an, an adulterer, different, different uh, viewpoint with the same miracle. As you know that she used to go to get water from the water well at noon time. And it's about one and a half miles away from her home in the village. And usually the girls in the village would come to get the water from the well early in the morning so they'll not be uh, hit by the sun and they get sunstrokes. So she decided to go at noon time where nobody is there to avoid the insults or the, the other girls say about her because she has a very bad reputation in the village because of her sins. So she went there, she was exposed to sunstrokes of course, but she preferred that I, I can get a sunstroke better than I'm humiliated by other people. So that was her thought. But the Lord deliberately went there at that half time to save her from her sin. He forgave her the sin, he gave her the water that will let, not let her be thirsty again. So she felt it's a bargain that he, there is no need to go if I get this water that will keep me at home. There is no need to come to the well at noon time. And that would be a great thing. At the beginning, she didn't understand what kind of water he's going to give her. In our church, we use the water in a lot of our rituals. And like the, the time of, uh, we have three times prayers on waters, liturgies of water during the church year. One time at the time of baptism of Christ. The other time is on Great Thursday, and uh, Friday, the last Friday of the Lent. And the third one is at the time of the feast of the martyrdom of St. Pierre and St. Paul in July. So why is the church praying on water? Water resembles a lot of things in our life. First of all, a human body consists of 70% of the body is water in the, the, the cells of the body. So it's essential for our life. The second thing, it cleans everything. When you have something dirty, you wash it with water, it's washed away. And it purifies the person who has this kind of water. Also, it puts off the fire. When there is a fire and sprinkle water in it, it's put off. So. It has a lot of uses, so it's very important in our life. Some people get thirsty in order to get this water. But there are lots of examples of getting thirsty, but you don't get quenched the thirst. The first one of them is the sea water. It's salty water. The more you get water from the sea, you are not quenched. So you need more and more. But never stops. It does not satisfy a person. And this resembles our indulgement in the world and in our sins. We do commit a sin and we want more. We have money and we want more. We have beauty and we want more. We'll never be satisfied. So that's what kind of the other kind of thirst is the thirst for the holy water that gives us life, the water the Lord Jesus Christ gives. So that's the one we should be here. So when we have this water from God, when we have the Holy Spirit that works in our life, we will have satisfaction no matter whether you drank a lot of water, the regular water or not. So 
the real satisfaction comes from God. So, like being thirsty for money, if you count your money, it's, it comes and goes. But the real person who is rich with money is a person who is satisfied with what he has because the little money that he has, God bless. And it's much better than you get more money and spend more money and that's it. Money comes and goes. It's a tool in our hands, but some people worship the money. So that's dangerous. It's very important to remember that if I have content and satisfied with God's dealing with me, he gives me what, what I need, that's enough for me. But you know, we need more and more, more money for more luxur luxurious life and for our lusts and pleasure and fun and all these things. So all these things are going on. So it's very important to remember that. What I'm thirsty for, the water of the world, I need more and more and I'm not, never satisfied. So we have little of anything that God has given to you and you are satisfied with it, then you'll be content and then you don't need anything else. And this reminds us of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because the shepherd, the good shepherd gives food to the sheep, he gives water to the sheep, he takes good care of their health and so on and so forth. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. If we are satisfied with what he gives us, we will live happily. We will not worry about anything. If you get all these pleasures of the world, we'll never be satisfied with them. We want more and more. And the more we have from the world, the more it's very dangerous for us. So it's very, very important. I'll give you examples from the Bible about that. King Solomon, he became a king at the age of 18. Like a, teen gender, a, teen, a teenager becomes a king, so he knows nothing in life yet. So he knelt down and asked God to give him wisdom so that he can handle the, the whole people whom he, he he's have the authority on. But later on, he was indulged in life and he desired a lot of things. And the Bible tells that he was married 700 times, 17, 700 wives and 300 of the uh, servants of the, of the palace that he has. He's not satisfied. And the end of it, because he's not satisfied, whatever he is given, with the riches and whatever it is, he discovers at a later age that this is only just holding air. Nothing will be remaining for him. Nothing would help him to go to eternal life. So it's it, so thirsty for things pertaining to the world, and then he got nothing at the end of it. He lost a lot of things, but finally he repented. Another example is Jacob. He was greedy, he wanted to steal the uh, first sonship of his father. The firstborn child will get a blessing with his father and will be very blessed in his life. So he wanted that, getting a blessing from a human being, not the blessing from God. And then his, his brother was angry and he kept following him wherever he goes to revenge. For 10 whole years, he escaped to avoid the problem that will happen by his brother. So this is life. The more we want from it, the more dangerous and harmful it is for us. But the, it's very important that if we want to have more of sin, or more of money, or more of things that are pertaining to the world, we never are, are satisfied. And what's the, how can we solve the problem? Everybody, everything around us is very attractive. Every, uh, pe pe people around us want to get more money and more pleasure in life and satisfaction, but there is no. So how can we solve the problem? The problem is the water, the living water of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I have a little thing with God's blessing, it makes a lot of difference. Then our life is blessed, we live peacefully, we live in comfort, and we live thanking God every, for everything He gives to us 
because he gives us what we need, not what we want. Sometimes he wants things that are dangerous for us. And I always give an example of a little child, four years old kid, and he is playing all day long and he goes to the kitchen and his mother is cooking. And he likes the, the knife that is very shining. He wants to play with it because it's shining. And his mother, because she loves him, says no. Same thing, we want things in the world and God says no, simply because they are harmful to us, but we are not aware of that, like that little child. He is not aware that a sharp knife would hurt him. So it's very, always, it's always very important to be satisfied with whatever God gives us, whatever he puts in our hands. If we are satisfied with it, we are satisfied. If we want more, we will not get it because it's harmful to us. A lot of people when they win the lotteries and all these things, of course that's not acceptable by the church. When you get millions of dollars, the life is, lifestyle is changed, totally changed. Because he wants to have more fun in his life, he wants to acquire a lot of things that belong to him, he wants to have more and more, and you're never satisfied. Once the end of it, a person dies, and he's put in a casket, and there is nothing with him in the casket. Just something to just cover his body, the naked body. Because a human being is born naked and will go back after it will be naked too. So what's the point of running all, year, all your life all the time to get more and more from it and then you're going to leave it to the other people? So it's very important to remember that. The real satisfaction comes from God, not from things pertaining to the world. So we need to remember that the only one who can save us from the sin and indulging in sin and all the pleasures of the world is our Lord Jesus Christ. Like what happened to that woman? She was thirsty for more, more uh, sin and she could not get rid of that sin. She wanted more and more. And the Lord very tenderly told her that about, he didn't say that she is keeping, committing adultery. He says, yes, you have you you got three, five husbands and the, the sixth one is not yet, you are not married yet. Very gently telling her about her sin. She is never satisfied, she wants more and more. But the only one who changed her life totally with just a few words, a few way of dealing with the people, he treated her with patience and kindness. And that's the way he won her and brought her back to the faith of God and changed her from the worst woman in the village to the first preacher to preach the, telling the people that the Messiah has come because he told me about everything in my life. This total change when she encountered God how did it change? The word of God that gives satisfaction in her heart. And then she was totally changed. So no matter how sinful we are, no matter how our, we are indulged in the pleasures of the world, you kneel down, take refuge in Christ, because he is the only one who will save us from this trip, a trap that will lead us to hell and bring us back to the bosom of the Father who is very compassionate and kind and accepts everybody who repents his sin. So this is the way that we have to make up your minds on now today. How to, get to do that is through repentance, confession, and Holy Communion. Because the Lord says this is, to, is given for the remission of sins and eternal life to those who partake of it. So think of that thoroughly. Holy Communion is not just anything that you take from the church whether it's a blessing or you have an exam and you want to pass an exam and whatever it is, mainly we have to have the Lord Jesus Christ in us so that he will forgive us our sins to prepare us for the kingdom of heaven. So it's an awesome sacrament of the church. As a matter of fact, it's the best of the sacraments that lead us into the kingdom of heaven. In order to go there, we have to forget about our sins and the pleasure of life, focus on him only, and then he will take us there safely 
away from Satan, and then we have in peace forever and ever with the Lord Jesus Christ. For him is you. Oh, <coughs> Amen. <coughs>